did you get a turquoise blue, baby blue car? <laughs> I think I did. You did. Oh, it's nice. Ready for a 20 hour trip? The other side of the planet? Hit a different ocean? So look at some Pacific Ocean. So it's been what, Ryan? Two weeks? Two weeks since I've been at this airport? Since we last saw this airport and we're already back. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my visa. What? <laughs> <laughs> this joke is not fun, Ryan. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. I did forget my hoodie. <laughs> yeah, but as opposed to uh, a visa, you can actually travel without a hoodie. That's true. All right, guys, it's only been two weeks since we left this airport for the last time, and we're already back because we are leaving Ryan, who's going to Singapore for a course that he's going to teach. So this week, it's you and me. See you in a week. Bye. See you. Bye, YouTube. Bye bye. Okay, there is literally no one to watch. Merima for one reason and the reason is that for the three months that we've been here we're paying 750 euros now that's 250 euros per month and just for comparison 250 euros is what we have paid per week in certain marinas and that's what it can cost per night in certain other marinas in the Med. So needless to say when we arrived here we did not have high expectations on the place. Almerima is divided into three what they call darsenas. It's like both a dock and a basin. Darsena one is the party darsena. That's where you will find the office, which is a little remote, but also Leo's bar, Mario's, and the Stumble Inn, which is a British pub, in which after a couple of beers last night, I decided to impersonate Shania Twain. That happened. Darsena 2 is where we are right now, and it could also be named the Nothing Darsena, because there is literally nothing here. Which is a good thing because there is no one around to disturb you with their extremely poor karaoke skills. What do I spend my, my time doing in, in this marina, you ask? Dorsena 3 is where you will find cafes, other bars where you can have a beer and a tapa for 3 euros, which we've made a few dinners out of, and a pub where you can find locals on Friday nights playing the guitar. We just need a fire and some s'mores. You do, it's, it's, I've been on the beach somewhere. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right? Where are the s'mores, Ryan? I don't know. We need to get some. Yeah, that's uh, Stuart, the guy who's building art. As opposed to a lot of bigger Spanish marinas, such as Cartagena or Valencia, there is actually no city around Almerimar. Almerimar is a very small little place that is essentially organized around boating, golf, and I guess tourist apartments. I realize as I am filming this that I am still wearing my pajamas and I'm potentially exposing myself to thousands of people watching me in my morning gown. But before I go shower, let's go for a round so I can show you around. Just finish my coffee here. It's windy today. It's so windy. Ah. So this region of Spain is called Costa del Sol, which is the coast of the sun in Spanish. But before it was called Costa del Sol, it was actually called Costa del Viente, the coast of the wind. Maybe in order to attract more tourists, they decided to rename it Costa del Sol because sun is obviously more attractive than the wind. Ooh, running against the wind, always fun. So the first thing that we are going to do today is to go to the marina office to pick some mail and packages. Now the marina office is situated a 15 minutes walk from the boat and although normally I would take my kick bike and go all the way there, today I need to take the car because the package that we need to pick is apparently very heavy. Okay, it's really heavy babe. It's gonna be like 45 kilos. Yes, I realized that. I realized that every time we receive a very heavy package... <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> you're away. Yeah, it might be quite big and awkward also. So yeah. getting onto the boat, you may, you may want help. Yeah, so. I received a call from the marina yesterday telling me that I had a package. It's very heavy, so I'm there now. And, All right. um, well, send, send me a picture, let me know. <laughs> let's go see how it looks. All right, I'll let you go. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks, honey. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Polar seal. Oh yes, yes. I have no idea how I am going to carry the water maker all the way to the car. Well, that was uh, quite the adventure. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Okay, now I have to say that I have absolutely no idea what I am going to do with this water maker because <sighs> one, it's really heavy and it's really big, so bringing it on the boat is going to be a huge project. But once it's on the boat, where do I store it? This is a really small space. So I'm thinking that I'm actually going to ask the English chandlery if they can keep it until next week when Ryan and I start installing it. We've done a lot of work with them. They are the most adorable people in the world and hopefully they can help me. 
So we're gonna continue this tour of the marina and I'm going to take you to the other part of the harbor where there is the yard, the chandlery and all the people that do a little bit of work for us. Okay, let's get back to the car. I have to say though, most of the days here in Almerima it's a really nice and warm and sunny but for some reason today, the day that I actually want to give you a tour of the marina, it's really cold and windy. I mean really cold, everything is relative. It's uh, March and I'm just wearing a sweater. I hope that they are okay with keeping the water maker for a few days. That would be nice. Oh, look guys, there's a doggy. Hello, doggy. Hi. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, that's a relief. All right, now our next stop is going to be at the stainless steel guy who works here in Almerima. He's also British and he's currently building our arch. And he's really great. He's absolutely brilliant to work with. We think that the work that he does is fantastic. And the next step is to install the arch. Now, Ryan isn't here this week. So we figured that we were going to wait until he's back to actually mount it on the back of our boat. Whew, windy! And so I have to go there and make sure that we're actually gonna do this on Monday when Ryan comes back. So. Hello! It's, ju it's just me. How are you? Yeah, good. Wow! Is that ours? Yeah. Ah, that looks cool. Uh, Ryan wanted me to ask you yeah. when we were going to mount this on when? the boat. Yeah, when? I wanted to do it Monday, but I think we've got no hope. Oh no, is that a weather thing? Yeah. So Monday, we're looking in Tuesday. Wednesday can be up to 40 knots of wind. So it's Thursday, Friday is when the weather's dropping down again because I've got to weld on the boat. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. weld when it's windy because it blows the gas away. Oh, we don't so, want that. No. Okay, well then I guess that... So we'll have to keep an eye on it, but at the moment it looks like... And trying to lift those panels up in, yeah. in 30 knots of wind. No, you don't, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, let's uh, leave Stuart to it and uh, go back to the boat. Bye guys! <laughs> now, Almerimar is not only a small community of boater and a village built around the marina. It is also a big golf complex. I believe that there are five or six golf courses around. And something a little more unexpected. And that's where I want to take you next. And before that, we're going to go check out the bathroom. Okay guys, I hope that no one comes around because this is a little embarrassing, but we really need to talk about this. You see, I believe that a bathroom is what can make or break a marina. And here in Almerima, the situation is not particularly brilliant. For us who live on a boat, a bathroom is really important because, well, this is where we come to the bathroom and this is where we come to take a shower. In here, as I am going to show you, follow me. Here is one shower and here is the other shower. That's right guys, for the 500 boat spots that there are around Darcina 1 and Darcina 2, there are only two showers for the women. That being said, I give this marina a plus point for leaving you the possibility to decide yourself when you want the stream of water to be on and off. The water pressure is good, but the temperature can definitely change from one day to another and vary from lukewarm to extremely hot. Obviously one being a lot more attractive than the other. Okay, so now that we've talked about the shower, let's talk about the toilet themselves. The privacy offered by this door could be a little better, but most important, in this toilet, there is absolutely zero toilet paper. Nothing. Zero. 
That's right, no toilet paper, because in this bathroom, you have to take the toilet paper before you go in the bathroom. And guess what? Most of the time, it's empty. I found out about this system and the fact that this system doesn't function properly when I visited the marina bathroom the first time and I hadn't been to the toilet in three days and there was no toilet paper. All right guys, it is time for me to show you what it is that I wanted to show you that I completely did not suspect existed at all ever before I arrived here and for that we need to take the car and go on top of that cliff over here. largest concentration of greenhouses, or as they call it in Spain, the sea of plastic. It is right here, around Almeria, that more than half of the demand of fruits and vegetables in Europe is produced. More than half of the European demand. no idea that this existed. I guess I never asked myself that question. And yet, here we are, right behind Almerima, this nice little community organized around boating and golfing and restaurants and pub, is a completely different world. Because on one hand, we need to eat. We need those fruits and vegetables that end up in our plates. But seeing this, seeing this sea of plastic, seeing the migrant workers bike around the greenhouses. All right, guys, let's get back to the boat. More than big revelations about the food that we eat, I'm learning a lot being here in Almeri Mar. By the time that March turns into April, it will be five months since we arrived here. And out of those five months, we've lived here for two. Two months at a marina. And although it's really cheap to be here and we have permanent access to power and fresh water and grocery stores nearby and all kinds of conveniences, I'm realizing that Living in a marina is not what I moved on a sailboat for. And I never really considered that part of sailing full-time. That, you know, in certain parts of the world, like, you, you can't sail full-time and you have to stay put for a while. And yes, Almerimar is a really nice place to be, like, staying put at. I am not complaining. But I chose to live on a boat to see the world and be permanently on the go. And I never really thought that because of the seasons and the unstable weather or because of some refits or projects or repairs that take longer time than planned, that would mean that at some periods you would have to be living in your boat in some place for extended periods of time. It may sound silly but I had never really thought about it and that is a big lesson learned here. 
That being said, we are making the most out of our time here in Almerimar and we're working on some really exciting projects. And talking about one big exciting project, in next week's video we are going to be talking about DIY water makers and how we are doing, making our own water maker. So stay tuned for that one, it is going to be good. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't done it already. If you like our videos, chances are that YouTube will recommend you our videos anyways. But by subscribing, you help us navigate that mystique algorithm that we're working with. So guys, thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this week's video and I will catch you soon. Have a good day. Bye.